Hey y'all, Carver Beggar here, coming to you live in the great state of California, more specifically, San Diego. Even more specifically than that, I am in the lovely Balboa Park. And even more specifically than that, I'm in front of the Museum of Man. Being a man myself, I'm very interested in uh, learning about man. Honestly, I, I don't know a whole lot going into this. We're kind of going into this a little bit blind, although driving in, it looked like they had a special exhibit on cannibalism. So that's got to be good, right? Follow me. So as we enter, we have monsters, this giant squid beast, and then there is an actual uh, bar over there serving beer, so you can get a little toasted while you uh, explore the museum. All right, we're heading into the monster's maw. There's a Sasquatch up there above this small child's bed. It says, beware, don't look under the bed. What's, what's under? Oh my gosh, it's, it's some sort of beast under their bed. This museum's scary. All right, so continuing on this bedroom, it's like uh, this kid has a collection of things to keep away monsters. There's garlic, of course, that protects against vampires. Obsidian, it says, uh, gives an extra boost of energy, protects against midship makers. Black salt, uh, so you can sprinkle that on the ground to keep monsters away. All right, this kid's ready. Uh, here's another bed, and that is not something you want watching you sleep. Don't know exactly what it is, but he does not look like a fluffy bedtime companion. This kid's been reading all about monsters. Probably not good for his nightmares. It's a werewolf. Oh, look at the chupacabra. He's, he's, he's spewing blood. That's terrifying. Oh, no. Release the kraken. Well, Lamassu, though, he looks kind of nice. <laughs> Godzilla and mummies. That's spooky. Barbagazi and the least scary monster of all, fairies. The list of monsters around the world. Let's see where all the hairy ape men are. Oh, yeah, over there. And uh, down in South America. What goes on? In the monster theater. I don't know, man. I don't know, man. There's a Quetzalcoatl. Here's some foo dogs. Give, this stump here gives advice on how to defeat various monsters. Let's see, how do we defeat a golem? See, yes, the three letters are, are written on my forehead Alpha, Mem, and Tav. Spell the Hebrew word of truth. If, you, if I catch you, just erase the Aleph, and I will die. The two remaining letters now spell death. Oh, man. You don't want him coming after you. So to get rid of the Pombero, all you have to do is give him honey and rum. He loves eating honey and, and getting plastered on rum. This is explaining here how elephant skulls were originally the creation of the Cyclops myth that the trunk hole they thought was the eye socket and they thought this was a giant cyclops man. There's a giant dream catcher where you can leave the names of your monsters that will make them, uh, make them disappear. This monster is loneliness. That's a tough monster to get rid of. All right, so you gotta write down the thing that scares you the most. And if you hang it on the dream catcher, it won't be able to get you. All right, I'll be sleeping a little easier. Some mermaid figures, and this one's uh, playing a, playing a ukulele. I initially thought this was a um, a bar, but apparently it's actually an exhibit in the museum on beer. Here's some beer mugs down here, and up here is uh, King Gambrius, the man that invented beer. He has uh, actually statues of him in uh, Milwaukee. But this is saying that uh, St. Gambrius never existed. So how did he invent beer if he didn't exist? 
have an exhibit here on uh, race, that people of different races of portraits. And here's some exhibits from their former exhibit on race uh, 100 years ago. This is a bust of a Teton Sioux man. So I guess this is like a classification, special classifications for people of different races. And apparently these were real people that were, uh, the, these racial busts were modeled after. This little girl, she's labeled as American, fifth generation. And this is labeled American Negro. Hmm. Here's the Post Secrets exhibit. Uh, if you remember, there, there was a website, or probably still is, a website where people could send in their deepest, darkest secrets, and they would be displayed on the website, and then they have a real life uh, collection of these postcards here. So all these postcards sent by real people. The postcards that people have sent. This is by a teacher who intentionally uh, failed a student so they could flirt with their dad for a year. That's kind of lousy. This person says, I will be in my grave dreaming of things I might have been. That's Elvis's grave. I don't think Elvis worries about that. I think Elvis may be happy with his body of work. And this person is worried that their baby will be ugly. That's, I, I don't even know what to say about that. I still haven't learned to not trust people. Uh oh, someone wrote gullible on the ceiling. All right. You can actually do your own post secret here. Share a secret, something that no one knows, your deepest, darkest secret. Put this in here. No one will ever know. Complete anonymity. Living with animals. And check this out. Our first ally is the dog. And I got it. You gotta like this guy's uh, this guy's beard here. Kind of looks like maybe a uh, prehistoric Papa Smurf. There's something something really weird about this guy right here. Oh yeah. He's not wearing any shoes. Yeah. It's an interesting collection of uh, dog collars here. Got the, you know, sensible and uh, ridiculous. They got little, little ties for tiny dogs. And then that is to protect a dog's neck from predators. Yikes. Don't squash my pet. It's a little cricket cage right there. And then a collection of bug toys. These tiny little animals on this wall. Living with pests. We've got some little mice here that come over from the motherland on these suitcases. And here's a host of different ways to kill and murder mice. These different traps. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know you can't have can't have rats eating and pooping in your cornflakes, but some of these just are sadistic. Oh, this rat's in the TSA. Wonder how he got his job. Yeah, look at all these rats hopping rides in these suitcases. This guy's so happy to be dancing on your shirt. And then uh, up here we have a little cockroach. Paradise. You can see there's a surfing cockroach. There's some cockroaches riding a motor or a roller coaster. Animals on our plates. This is an exhibit of animals that we eat. And you okay, Adam? You're, you're leering at the pig one. A little bit. Receipt paper for a face. Oh, and she has people oh, no, it's on. Newspaper. It's newspaper. Newspaper faced oh, pig woman. Really Oh, wait a minute, that was the part that bothered you? Something else. You thought she was made of receipts, but she's really made of newspaper, and now you're okay with that. Big difference. What are you, what are you eating there, Adam? It's a good question. It's 
that. Considering uh, it's being eaten, no. even a, even grabbing silverware. <laughs> I don't have an answer. You're eating it with your mind. Mind powers. 1960 Hawaiian hot dog kebabs. Oh, that sounds good. Mmm, Hawaiian hot dog. That's the pretty gross looking actually. It says this content may be upsetting, so we're gonna look uh, behind this curtain. Yeah, that uh, that wasn't that wasn't great. This is a pretty cool cane sword right here. It's actually got a hoof on the end of it. Maybe I should start carrying one of these. Moving into the Egyptian section. And we have mummies. Here's some of the figures of Egyptian gods that actually were based after animals. And that god right there, he's uh, he's Toth, the, the the baboon god. Oh, so many mummies. I hope none of them are cursed. They have a kids exhibit here. It teaches them all about how to be the carpet bagger. And here's a fun little children's book, How to Make a Mummy. It says, the heart stays in the body, the brain gets pulled out through the nose. Remember that, kids. Next time you're, next time you're making a corpse into a mummy. All right, heading across the street to the cannibal exhibit. Wonder if they have any uh, free samples. <laughs> just, just kidding. All right, we start out with a bunch of movies that feature uh, cannibals. There's a fried green tomatoes, of course. Yes, there is a cannibalism subplot. I don't remember any cannibals in Deliverance. They're playing an episode of Family Guys fe featuring cannibalism. Oh my gosh. Some pop culture cannibalism. Then uh, my hometown's most famous cannibal, Jeffrey Dahmer. And then uh, the most famous, famous fictional cannibal. Am I afraid of cannibals? Oh, uh, like I don't think about it a lot, but I guess if one was coming after me, I'd be pretty scared. Here's different people's uh, travel fears. They in, uh, encourage you to write down what your fears are. This person's afraid of Danny DeVito. This person is afraid of the smell of the French. I'm starting to think these are like, think people are gonna make a joke out of this. Yeah, look at that, diarrhea. This is a Canadian man-eater headdress. They did a, they, a Canadian man-eating dance. Uh, geez, Canada, calm down. And there are some implements for human sacrifice. It's a knife that would be used to sacrifice someone in a bowl to uh, drain their blood into. How nice. This here, this is the bust of Ota Benga. He was an African pygmy that was around the turn of the century placed in a zoo. A, a the zoo in the Bronx, New York, in, in the, the monkey section. It was a real, it was a real sad, horrible, just awful story about a human being in, in an American zoo. That just think about that. A human being in a zoo. He, he wasn't a criminal, he was just an, from another country and from a different race. And they put him in a zoo. It is this terrible, terrible story. They actually did, uh, like, uh, African American preachers did finally um, get him released from the zoo and uh, had a very, very sad life after that. Had a lot of trouble uh, fitting in, and I think he actually committed, ended up committing suicide, which is super sad. That's like the saddest, most depressing, most racist story ever. This is all brand new to me. This is R U Part Cannibal. I certainly hope not. It's saying that there's actually a gene, PRNP, that causes you to be a cannibal. There's like a, a, a DNA helix right here. I don't know if any of these people are cannibals, but I don't like the way that this kid is looking at me. Here's an exhibit that actually talks about human body parts being used as medicine. There's a, uh, we got here some wonderful things. Powdered human flesh. Oh, no, nice. Skull moss. I don't even know what that is. 
mucus moss that grows on your skull and mummy, mummy dust and some human fat oh that's that's gross fresh blood seriously though people are pretty messed up here's what all these things are for apparently the powdered human flesh is good for diarrhea cannibalism in Jamestown and uh, it's like they ate horses dogs bones rats and snakes and when those ran out they switched to eating this lady right here there's a reconstruction of her skull showing that it's been gnawed on and smashed this is keep your voice down you're scaring that child she's crying sorry this is educational all right they want you to make a, a choice here it says uh, what would you do if you were faced with uh, the ch same choices as shipwrecked st sailors starving colonists or stranded travelers you gotta write down your answer and put it in the bottle so I would just go ahead and eat Adam and, oh oh I didn't I didn't I didn't see you standing Did you standing say what I think you said that you wrote down? no I said eat ants That's much better tastier now who said that cannibalism couldn't be educational they try our luck playing uh, this cannibalism version of Operation. What do I want to eat first? Hmm, how about some delicious spare ribs? Oh! Yes. Oh, sorry. Let me just see if the brain is a little easier to grab. Ah! There, nice and easy. It actually shows the different caloric content of each body part and from what I'm uh, seeing here it looks like the heart is uh, is the most healthy option eat a heart to keep your to keep your heart healthy okay, this is an exhibit where you have to decide what you would do on a on a raft stranded in the ocean you have to draw straws draw, the straw, draw, it. draw the straw let's see which one of us is gets to eat. All right, all right, draw a straw. Short straw, you will be killed and eaten. Second shortest, you will do the killing. Do I pick a straw now? Yeah, yeah, pick a straw, pick, pick a straw. straw. Oh man, oh, so that do is. Do I win, do I win? Yeah, no, you lose. Hey, I lose? And I guess since there's only two of us, I have to kill you? Do I, do I use the straw to, to kill? That's a weird looking straw. Ah, ah, ah. I think some of these interactive exhibits are maybe a little on the twisted side. Where do you draw the line? What is cannibalism and what is not cannibalism? Now the person before me said that uh, eating human flesh and eating human brains are cannibalism. I agree. Let's see, not cannibalism. Boogers, breast milk, saliva, that would make everyone a cannibal. Because from kissing, yes, kissing makes you a cannibal. Does drinking urine make you a cannibal? Um, makes you pretty gross. Dust does not make you a cannibal. Cremated remains. Uh, it says Keith Richard uh, snorted the father. I, I know what I'm gonna I'm gonna disagree. I'm gonna say don't eat cremated remains. That's just gross. Blood transfusion for medical purposes. I think that's fine. But uh, if you're just drinking blood because you like the taste, that's cannibalism. So we're gonna put that right on the line there. And uh, yeah, same with placenta. Version of the uh, Oregon Trail game, except uh, is a Donner Party game where they included cannibalism. Press one to eat all the bodies of your deceased companion. Well, when in Rome, You've made a difficult choice, but you've managed to survive. To keep some of the children alive, a rescue mission arrives, but they cannot take both you and the surviving children back to California. Why not? Uh, send the children to safety. You can uh, continue to scrape through consuming bodies of those who have died. <laughs> Press two to save yourself. Children are no longer your concern. <laughs> what, a great, what a great couple of options. You're in a good, we're in a good place now. That's great decisions. Uh, I, I'm not, I'm not gonna Sophie's choice here. I'll, 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 I'll move on along. Thank you all for joining me here at the Museum of Man as well as the special cannibal exhibit.
I think the most important lesson we've learned here is that just don't eat people. It's, 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 it's uh, let me list the ways why you don't eat people. Don't eat people, kids, but do check down in the description for my interactive map. It'll show you all the places I've been, and you can tell me where I need to go next. Also, if you'd like to contribute to the channel, uh, consider buying a t-shirt, consider donating to Patreon. A donation of $3 or more will get you a postcard once a month. But for now, this one's in the bag. Don't eat people.